Hi, and welcome to the Big Bear Homestead. Today is episode number eight in our Sustainable Living series. So today, we're talking about companion planting. All right, I know what you're thinking. Big Bear, what are you doing putting out a gardening video in the middle of winter? Well, to be honest, this is the season of preparation. Right now is the time that you need to be thinking about your spring and summer garden. You need to be looking through those seed catalogs. You need to be planning out how you're going to design and lay out your garden for this up and coming spring and summer gardening season. So with that in mind, we need to discuss companion planting or companion gardening. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video today. So what is companion gardening and why would we use it? All right, so what is companion planting or companion gardening? Is this something new? Is this something that just came into the gardening world in the last decade? The answer to that question is no. Companion gardening, com companion planting has been around for centuries. The Chinese have been doing it for a couple hundred years. Um, the simplest definition for companion planting is that you take plants that can be beneficial to each other and you plant them within cro cl very close proximity to each other. For example, you may have a plant that naturally repels a certain pest that is attracted to the other plant. You may have a plant that attracts pollinators that this other plant desperately needs. Or you may have a plant that uses up a lot of nitrogen out of the soil and you have a plant that returns a little bit of nitrogen to the soil. They all work together to be able to produce a better yield and a better product. So with that being said, why is companion gardening so important to those of us who are trying to live a sustainable life? So why is companion gardening so important to those of us that are trying to live a more sustainable life? Well, those of us in this lifestyle, we don't want to resort to having to use the harmful pesticides or herbicides or commercial fertilizers. Also, on the flip side of that coin, we don't want to lose our vegetables or flowers or soft fruit due to pests or have a low yield due to uh, bad soil conditions. So with that in mind, what are some examples of companion planting? All right, so what are some examples of companion gardening? Well, the most famous one that I know of that you guys probably heard of is the one called the Three Sisters, where you have squash, corn, and a beanie. So how you do the Three Sisters is you take your corn and you plant it in a spot where you're going to plant it. And then you wait and you let your corn get to about six to eight inches tall. Then you plant your bean or beans around your corn. Okay? Then as the beans grow up, your pole beans, it should be some type of a climbing bean, by the way, not a bush bean, but a pole bean. They can use the corn as a trellis. Okay? And then the squash can just be planted somewhere over here and it'll branch out as squash does. Okay? Now, one of the benefits that you have to doing this is corn 
and squash use a, use a good bit of nitrogen where most of your pole beans return nitrogen to the soil. So knowing that as an example to give you your baseline on how to put a companion planting garden together, how do you go about doing it? Okay, so how do we make companion planting or companion gardening work for us? Well, this is where it kind of separates from me telling you what to do into you doing your kind of your own research and your own homework. Because as our gardens fit our individual needs, your companion planting will fit your individual needs for your garden. So what you're gonna have to do is during this time of preparation, you're going to have to make a list of the plants that you guys wanna plant this spring and fall, and then start doing research on those plants to see which ones can work together. Now, you just can't slap plants together and go, it's companion gardening, because there are some plants that do not work well together. For example, in this plot that we have right here, we can't put onions in there because onions will stunt the growth of your beans. You also can't put tomatoes in here because some of the pests that will go after your tomatoes also go after your corn. So you're gonna have to do a little bit of research to find out what plants will work together to benefit each other. Once you do that, then you can lay out your companion garden and start to enjoy the benefits that you will receive from it. All right, well that does it for this week's video on sustainable living. I hope you guys found this video informative and somewhat enjoyable. I'd like to invite you guys to check out our website at www.bigbearhomestead.com. And while you're there, hey, check out our shop. You never know what you might find. I'd also like to invite you guys to check us out on these social medias. But I really would like to remind you guys, hey, we do live streams twice a week on Mondays and Saturdays. So come on by, hang out for a little bit, chew the fat with us and everybody in the chat box. I promise you, you'll have a good time. Now, if you guys really enjoyed this video, hey, do me a favor. Give me the thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. If you know somebody that's starting to get into the sustainable living lifestyle, starting to get into gardening, or is just starting to get into preparedness mindset, hey, do us a favor and them a favor. Hey, share this video. We would really appreciate it, and it might just help them out. Also, if you guys have any questions or comments about companion gardening, hey, leave them below. Just remember, be nice. And hey, if this is your first time here to the Big Bear Homestead, you kind of like what you see, our icon's been in that lower right-hand corner this entire video. Why don't you go ahead, take this time right now, click on it, hit the subscribe button, and while you're there, go ahead and hit that gray bell to let YouTube know that you want notifications for when we put out a video or when we, get, when we go live. But we appreciate you guys stopping by checking out this video don't forget the bloopers and the linked videos at the end thanks for coming by the big bear homestead and like always have a nice day Somebody hit my nipple with a mousetrap. <laughs> okay, I know what you're thinking. Big Bear, what are you doing putting out a guarding... <clears throat> a guarding. A guarding video. So, in this video of guarding, we're going to show you how to properly stand a post, how to walk it from flank to flank, and how not to take crap from any rank. Okay, well that does it for this week's video. I hope you guys found this video on companion gardening 
informative, and somewhat entertaining. No, there was nothing entertaining about this video. I should have said enjoyable. Because it's not like we had me with bubble teeth in and going around in black and white going, I'm a gardener, I'm a gardener. No, I didn't do any of that. We should have done it, but we didn't. But We're now in the second filming of this video. Yeah, this is the second filming of this video because we totally hosed up the audio the first time. And now I've got very bad gas, so we're all about to die from methane poisoning. I'd also like to remind everybody of the most important thing ever. It's about our live shows twice a week on Mondays and Fridays. Saturdays. Got to do this all over again. <laughs>